Hello and welcome to InvestFlow. Today we'll be looking at Sea Limited, one of the greatest growth stories of the last few years. The stock has been soaring for the last years ever since the pandemic started and before, but came crashing down in the last few months. So let's dig into the business, if it's a good company and if it potentially might be a good time to get into the stock. Sea Limited, ticker symbol SE was founded in 2009 by founder and current CEO Forrest Lee. The company currently has a market cap of around $70 billion. They employ around 33,000 people. They are headquartered in Singapore and are operating in the three segments e-commerce, gaming and fintech. As we can see, C-Limited has been a great success since the IPO in 2017. The stock went up almost 2,500% in the midst of the COVID pandemic and the whole um, explosion in growth stocks. Since the top for growth stocks, the stock corrected around 70% down to around the $100 levels, which still is a 780% profit if you held since the IPO. So let's see if this might be a good opportunity to be in the stock for the next 10 years. We take a look at the owner structure, we don't really see too much in the institutional ownership, but Tencent does own a stake of around 10% of C-Limited. Tencent did although sell their preferred shares a few months ago and they gave up pretty much all their voting rights. So now the, f the founder and CEO Forrest Lee owns around 53% or something like that of the voting, voting shares and thus controls the complete company. We take a look at the analyst opinions, we can see that pretty much everybody is positive towards the stock. The lowest price target right now is $167, which still offers an upside of 52%. The highest price target is around $400, which offers an astounding 264% upside. Keep in mind though that C Limited came down a lot and fast at that recently, so some of these price targets may be outdated. So keep these with a grain of salt. Sea Limited is a holding company which has three brands under its umbrella. The first one that got established was Garena, which stands for Gaming Arena, and obviously is their gaming and esports segment. The second segment is Shopee, which is their e-commerce segment. And the last one is Sea Money, which is their fintech. The first part of the Garena platform is the desktop. They have a platform similar to Steam where they publish and distribute games where people can collect a library of different games, they can chat together, they can communicate via voice. So besides that they also have, since Tencent is a big shareholder, they do have the rights to games like League of Legends. So they are the only company in the Southeast Asian region that can distribute League of Legends, which is great because it's one of the most popular games on the planet. Besides that, they also have a lot of other games. The far more important segment for Garena is mobile though. They distribute a few different games, also some from, from Tencent and some other licensing deals, for example Call of Duty Mobile. The most important one though is the in-house developed game Free Fire, which is a battle royale shooter, which is optimized for budget smartphones. This is done intentionally because most of the people that play on Garena's platform are in Latin America or Southeast Asia. These people normally don't have the newest cutting edge smartphone. They might have a, an old smartphone from like five years ago. So that every every single one of these people can play, they actually optimize it, that it basically runs on anything. So the graphics and, any, and anything like that isn't really impressive, but that's the mode pretty much for the game. They also do a lot of localization, so depending on which region you're in, uh, Garena will actually have designated maps or events or items that you can only purchase in, in that region and that is um, connected to the culture. So that's also pretty cool. 
We take a look at the active user numbers for Garena. Sadly this chart is in German but you will get the gist. You can see that Garena's free fire pretty much since la since launch has eaten market share like like anything we've ever seen. We can see that games like PUBG Mobile had a similar rise but then had a decline. Garena's free fire just keeps on firing out of all cylinders and right now has around 400 million monthly active users. Free Fire also is the most ha also has the most streamed esports event of all time. The Free Fire World Series in 2021 in Singapore had over 5 million concurrent viewers. If we take a look at the numbers for Garena, we can see that they are still growing fast. In Q3 of 2020, they were at around 570 million quarterly active users which they managed to increase by another 27% to over 720 million. The amount of quarterly paying users rose even sharp, more sharply though, from 65% increasing around 43% to almost 100 million. On, in the same time the bookings increased also by around 30%. Bookings basically means money that was spent on the platform but that might have not been spent. For example somebody adding some balance onto the onto his uh, his Garena account but not spending it for, for anything yet, just leaving the balance there. So it isn't recognized as revenue yet. The adjusted EBITDA also increased by around 22%. So the Garena business actually is profitable and fuels the business in the growth in the other business segments for Garena. The biggest new segment C Limited has is e-commerce. They made the platform Shopee originally just in the Southeast Asian region, but since then they expanded worldwide pretty much. They are now besides the normal Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia, Taiwan, Vietnam, Philippines or Singapore. They are now also in Latin America, so they are big in Brazil, they are also in Mexico or Colombia. But then they also recently expanded into Europe and they have present in Poland, Spain and France and are taking massive market share there. They are also in India which is a gigantic market. And as we can see in this chart here, Shopee also is by far the e-commerce side with the highest traffic in the in the home market of Southeast Asia. For example in Malaysia, in Malaysia they have a market share of 71% before Alibaba backed Lazada with 18%. In Thailand it's a little bit more competitive with 57% Shopee and 35% Lazada. In Vietnam Shopee is more dominant again though. This pretty much goes for all their markets in Southeast Asia. If we take a look at the numbers for Shopee we can see that they are pretty much in hyper growth. In the last uh, one year the gross orders rose by over 100% going from 700 million to 1.7 billion. The gross merchandise volume increased by 80% to around 17 billion. Their revenue increased by even more with 130% up to 1.5 billion in the third quarter alone. Shopee is the top ranked app by time spent in the app globally in the shopping category. They are also the top ranked app by average monthly active users in the Southeast Asian region. And they are also the top rated, top ranked app by downloads and by total time spent in the Brazilian region. The thing that makes Shopee so sticky is that they have a lot of gamification in the app and basically they make it fun for people to use the app. And that's why the time spent is so much better than most of their competitors. The third big segment for Shopee is the fintech section. They offer things like payments and financing and this is especially important because it pretty much incentivizes people to stay in their ecosystem. They use the Shopee, as the, the Shopee app and pay with the C-Money app. So this also gives a lot of network effect for Shopee. They can also offer things like buy now, pay later. And especially with credit they can incentivize people to, to buy more product. Basically they are using the Mercado Libre playbook here. Mercado Libre has a pretty mature and developed fintech 
which is at this point over half of the revenue for the company and has a great margin compared to the rest of the business. So this is the end goal for the C money section for Shopee, uh, for C Limited. And if they can manage to pull that off, that will be huge for the company. We look at the numbers for C money. They have around $4.5 billion in mobile wallet payment volume in the last quarter, up over 100%. So also the C uh, money segment is in hypergraph. They have almost 40 million quarterly paying users which is also up over 100% with 120% compared to Q3 of 2020. Besides the three main segments, C Limited also has other initiatives. These are for once the AI lab, where they do research and development into artificial intelligence. The solutions they are creating here can then afterwards be used in their other business segment and leverage these services and make them even better. They also have a capi venture capital fund called C Capital. They already have over 20 investments there in over 7 countries with a total portfolio value of over 7 billion. Especially the C Capital Venture Fund is interesting in my opinion because it kind of feels like they are doing the Tencent playbook here by making a venture capital fund early on and investing in promising small companies. Little fun fact besides, uh, Shopee also owns a football club in the Singaporean uh, First League, which is actually in the number one position too, and is called Lion City Sailors FC. Of course, Garena and Shopee are the main sponsors for the, for the club. Before we continue with the video, I would kindly ask you to like the video, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. We take a look at the last full year results, we can see that from 2019 to 2020 the revenue increased by pretty much double, reaching almost 4.4 billion. The net income decreased further from minus 1.4 billion to minus 1.6 billion. The EBIT also was in the same range. The equity increased by almost 200% to 3.4 billion and that means the equity ratio was 32%. In the last quarter we can see that even with the very tough comparables from the pandemic quarters in 2020, we still have hyper growth in 2021 with all segments firing out of all cylinders growing almost or even above 100%. The expenses are growing roughly uh, at the same pace, although a little lower. So we are seeing some operating leverage for, for C Limited here, but at the moment we are still nowhere near near being profitable in the near future. And that's also good with their strategy because they are pretty much going by a land and expand business model where they quickly want to expand and then then get more profitable as they improve in the region they are in. Looking at the evaluation we can see that there is no uh, calculable PE or PEC ratio. The price to sales ratio got cut in, in 3 pretty much from 21 to around 8 now. The enterprise value to gross profit got cut by, by 80% even from around 100 to 20.2 right now. The price to cash flow almost got half from 170 to 100 and the Petrovsky F score a score for the financial standing of the company is still very good at a 6 out of 9. Looking at the last 5 years we can see the explosive hyper growth. Revenue in the last 5 years is up over 1100%, growing from just 300 million to over 4 billion in 2020. And if we continue this in 2021 it will reach some, somewhere between the 7 to, to 8 billion. The net loss also kept increasing in the same time but only increasing around eightfold, going from minus 200 million to around minus 1.6 billion. Looking at the revenue split, we can see that gaming is still the biggest part of the business, but e-commerce is slowly taking over with already 41%. Product sales is only around 13% at the moment. In the region uh, chart, we can see something we don't see often. 
Southeast Asia is around 60% of the revenue, with the rest of Asia another 15%, 18% in Latin America and 3% in new uh, regions like Europe. We take a look, look at the debt situation for C Limited. We can see that they have no financial debt whatsoever. They have $12 billion in net cash. The uh, debt to equity ratio is 137 with around 8 billion in equity and around 11 billion in liabilities. Our guideline is around 200 here, so everything is in order. The reason that uh, C Limited has so much cash right now is that they did a, a share offering diluting shareholders a bit around the top actually. So they raised, I think, around 10 billion at a valuation of I think like 150 billion with a share price around $300. So that was a very great uh, decision from them because afterwards the stock pretty much got cut uh, by 70%. But they managed to get all the liquidity into the balance sheet at the top pretty much. So cash burn really isn't much of a problem considering they have cash for around 4 to 5 years of operations. Looking at the guidance, we can see that analysts are expecting Shopee to keep growing, not as rapidly, but still at a very rapid pace. The sales are expected to grow by around 100% to roughly 19 billion. On the same time, the net income should get closer to the break-even zone, reaching around minus 1 billion, so a net loss margin of around 5%. So let's summarize. C Limited has a strong market position in several segments in their region, like e-commerce, gaming and fintech. They have a broad international diversification, with most of their revenue being all over Asia, but also a, l a large ch chunk in Latin America. Their expansion is in full swing and they are experiencing, hy experiencing hyper growth in all segments pretty much. The negative part though is the valuation, which even though it got a lot better is still relatively high. And the path to profitability is still needs to play out. Some of the different segments like especially gaming is very profitable, but also some regions in e-commerce are actually already at break even with scale. So as long as they keep expanding at the same pace and that, uh, and as long as they keep developing their position in the markets they are in, profitability can be achieved, but it still is a uncertainty. Looking at the mode, we didn't think that C Limited has a great technology, so not much of a technology mode here. The brand is very strong though, especially in Southeast Asia and Latin America. Shopee and Garena are household names that people know, at least the younger people. They don't have too much experience since they are only operating since 2009. So let's take a look at my outlook. The expansion into Europe could generate even more growth, which uh, early indicators are suggesting. All sectors have high growth rates and good prospects. They have a strong partnership with Tencent, who owns a large part of the business. C Money is still pretty much at the beginning and has a large runway and a lot of cross-selling uh, possibilities. They do have a lot of competing stocks in the e-commerce sector but also in gaming and fintech. The valuation is also something investors need to keep in mind. All that being said, I do own shares in C Limited. It is around 3% of my portfolio. And I do see upside potential in the future and I will, I will keep buying into the future after I sized up my other positions. So I hope you liked this video and this stock analysis. And if you did, consider leaving a like, following my channel and leaving a comment down below. And I hope to see you next time.